actually Kanye tried to find me. His manager at the time found a way to find another another Howardite that ended up working for Jermaine Dupri. His name was um, DeAndre Maid, and we called him Free. And Free called me up and said, "There's this guy from Chicago who wants to meet you." And I said, "All right, cool." Um, so first he came to my studio and he bought me the, a DAT tape. You remember the DAT tapes? Everybody remember DATs? So he bought me a DAT tape of Kanye and it had like maybe 15, 20 tracks on it. And I was like, wow. You know, it, it was almost like, it sounded a lot like what we did, but he, his ear obviously was Midwest. So he had a different bop. His bop was a little different. And what he was looking for in samples was a little different. So. I knew that none of us was doing that, so I was like, man, he kind of dope. So I arranged uh, a meeting. He flew from Chicago. We met. Um, loved his attitude. The Kanye you see now is not necessarily the same Kanye that I met. He was a little little more humble. He had a girlfriend, college. You know what I mean? He was talking about getting married and his girlfriend. I think her name was Alexis or something like that, because I had a daughter named Alexis. So he was a real nice guy, but he was a savage, meaning when he came to New York, he didn't want to do nothing but go find, get a chain from Jacob and sit in the studio. That's all he wanted to do. He didn't care about chasing no girls, he didn't care about drinking, smoking, going to no clubs, none of that. All he wanted to do was get to the studio. So he called up at 10 in the morning wondering why we ain't there yet. I said, fam, I just left at seven, fam. You know what I'm saying? Like, give it a minute, you know what I mean? So, but, so, so that's how I met him, um, strictly through that. And that was, a, that was within a, like a two, three month period. So what was your working relationship like? What, what was he doing for you? Well, he, I ended up managing him okay. at the time. I heard him, I loved him, I thought he was dope. Um, he wanted to rap at the time. Mm -hmm. And I loved him rapping, but his management that brought him to me didn't want it. So we ended up co-managing him, basically. I mean, my dumb ass, the deal I worked out with the co-management was because he really didn't really want to rock with them. I did a deal kind of sort of with the co-managers that said if he leaves them, he leaves me too. You know what I'm saying? Because they brought him to me. So it wouldn't be fair if I keep him and they went on. Mm -hmm. And I was like, cool. I was like, we I don't, you know, I ain't stealing nobody's money. I'm good. We, we all right. And we rocked for a little while. So I managed him. I got him, you know, some placements on, you know, like Jermaine Dupree and the Brat and different things like that. I'm actually one of the people that introduced him to Rock, Rockefeller at the time. Mm -hmm. um, he produced five songs on the Mad Rapper album. He did the one with me and Eminem. Mm -hmm. He did Ghetto with me and Raekwon. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, Y'all remember the Mad Rap album? Anybody got the Mad Rap album? Yeah, so Kanye was real integral in that because I was trying to introduce him as a producer, you know, the protege type of thing. So right, that, right. that's how I met Kanye. Okay. And that okay. was our working relationship. You're listed as a co-producer on the, the Nas track. Yes. And um, there's a Little Kim track as well. Yes. That you both, so how, yes. so he, how did that work? Well, basically, um, the work is my work, meaning Nas is calling me. Little Kim is calling me. They want D dot. When you're busy, or you, they want something specific. And my working relationship with Kanye was, you're you're not producing yet. Meaning you're just sitting at home making your beats. And at them time, in them days, we didn't really let the artists just go into the studio like today and make whatever they want over your track. Mm -hmm. We discussed it. We had powwows. We talked about it. Mm -hmm. we, we we did ten different hooks, right. twenty seven different verses. So that was my job. Right. That's producing. Right. That's getting the track right. right. My job is also to say, okay, maybe the sample couldn't clear. So I would play the, the bass line over, or I'd play the sample over, mm -hmm. or we'd do a rendition of the sample. You know, these are the different things that I had to do right. in our relationship. <laughs> so combine what he did, combine what I did, we'd go produce the track. Right. And that was a, to me, that was a platform to put him in, a, in spaces that he wouldn't normally have been at, because he was, he was producing for, you know, artists like Dead Prez, which is fine, mm -hmm. but Dead Prez ain't Biggie at the time, you know what I mean? Uh, he produced him for, you know, whoever, whoever, but that's not Jermaine Dupri at the time, you know? And so the goal was to let these bigger artists hear this man's production mm -hmm. through my vessel of opportunity, because at the time, I'm hotter than fish grease right now. It's 97, 98, 99, I got mm -hmm. chart topping records, we mm -hmm. Grammy nominated, so, you know, this was a good avenue. Mm -hmm. For, for him, and that's, that's how we used it to get him there.